Okay, so to round off our series of four videos looking at aspects of theory of the firm, I've put together eight past multiple choice questions for you to have a go at. Uh, for each question, you can press the pause button after we've been through the question and then have a go yourself, uh, choose your answer, and then we'll reveal the answer and provide a little bit of explanation ahead of it. So this is a great chance for you to check your understanding of some key aspects of theory of the firm. These types of questions appear regularly at A-level IB exams and assessments. They really are uh, used frequently to test your understanding. So here's the first question. The diagram on the right-hand side there shows the costs and revenues of a firm that is producing output QE with a price PE. What would explain this? So which of the following four options there would explain why the firm has settled on an output of QE, selling at a price P, press the pause button. So clearly this question relates to business objectives. Which one have you gone for? The correct answer is C. The manager's salaries are related to revenue rather than to profits because where the MR curve cuts the x-axis, that is the point of sales revenue maximization. You might have a manager, for example, whose pay is linked to the sales of a business. He's looking for his sales bonus at the end of the year, not necessarily the profit the firm makes. So question one is C. Question number two, which objective involves the managers of a firm operating with just enough profit to keep shareholders happy whilst maintaining sales revenue above the profit maximising level? Have a go, please, at question number two. Again, a different objective here. They're looking to make just enough profit to keep the owners happy, but keeping their revenues above profit maximisation. The correct answer, I hope you got it, is B, profit satisficing. It's a departure from profit maximisation, aiming to make a satisfactory and sufficient return for shareholders, but also achieve higher revenues for perhaps the managers. Question three is a basically a definition question. Have a go at this one. At which level of output will a firm achieve the aim of sales maximization? Press that pause button and have a go, please, at question three. Well, sales maximization, sales maximization is achieved at an output level where average cost equals average revenue, price equals cost, the break-even point where a firm is making uh, normal profit. Question number four, the diagram, familiar diagram now hopefully, shows the cost and revenue curves of a firm in a contestable market. It's currently charging the profit maximising price of OP1. In order to deter entrance, the firm decides to change its aim to sales maximising. What price will achieve this new aim? Have a go, please, at question number four. So this question is essentially about limit pricing, moving away from profit maximization, cutting the price designed to deter potential entrant into a contestable market. The price that will be, uh, will be cut to, to achieve sales maximization, is answer C, OP4, where the average cost meets the average revenue curve. You can cut the price up to the point Q4 where you're making where you're making normal profit. We are halfway through. Question number five: A firm sells its products to customers in two separate markets, M and N. Under which conditions will a policy or a strategy of price discrimination between the two markets be most profitable for the firm? Have a go, please, at question number five. So this question is about price discrimination as a strategy. So you're looking, obviously, for a market where there's a gap, a difference in the elasticity of demand. So it's going to be C or D. And then to make it most profitable, you've got to prevent the people paying the low price reselling to people who might pay the higher price. So people in market M reselling to people in market N. That's going to be easier for the firm if the gap, the geographical distance between the markets is large. So the correct answer there is C. 
Question number six. The diagram shows the cost curves of a firm operating in a perfectly competitive market. Below which price will the firm shut down in the short run? Have a go, please, at question number six. So this question is about the shutdown point. We talked about this in the second video in our series. While the shutdown point for the firm in the short run, you've got to cover your variable costs. So below which price will the firm shut down? Below price C in the market. Two to go. Which diagram accurately represents the revenue curves of a producer in imperfect competition? such as a monopoly or monopoly competition. So which of them is an accurate representation of the revenue curves for, let's say, a monopolist? Is it A, B, C or D? Press the pause button and then let's go through the answer in a few seconds. OK, the correct answer here is A. You maximise revenue where marginal revenue cuts the x-axis. Well, that happens, uh, gosh, that happens three times. But A is accurate. Uh, D, of course, is inaccurate. They've put the marginal and the average revenue curves the wrong, the wrong way around. So it's A. And here's our last question. Hey, some of you may be on the, on the cusp of getting eight out of eight. So having a, I love this question. What would explain an increase in the size of an industry and a fall in the average output of a firms in the industry? What would explain an increase in the size of an industry but a fall in the average output of firms in the industry? You've got a lot of text to read there, so take your time, press the pause button and have a go at the final question, question number eight. OK, so the correct answer here is D. External economies of scale, quite important, worth revising. We have a video on this on the YouTube side. Are the gains, the cost efficiencies, the cost advantages of the industry as a whole becoming bigger? Things like research and development increasing, universities supporting the industries, new transport infrastructure, uh, the emergence of skilled labour in a particular sector. All firms in the industry can benefit from external scale economies as the industry gets bigger. But if the average output has gone down, well, that could be due to the fall in economies of scale internally. So the minimum efficient scale of production might have come down. Firms reach MES at a lower output than they did before, which means there's room for more firms to operate in the market. Well, there we go. Uh, this has been a series of four videos looking at aspects of theory of the firm and I hope for those eight multiple choice questions at the end provided a really good test of your understanding. Take care, stay well, see you soon.